guys, welcome. We're gonna brew again. What we're gonna do this time, we're gonna, we're gonna brew an IPA, but we got something interesting here now. Um, I got a G's from uh, Scarment that it's just been released about like a week ago or something like that, and it's called uh, Thiol Libre. Um, what is that gonna help us? That's gonna help us to increase more the, fl the, the flavors of uh, the hop, and also it's gonna bring a little bit like a guava flavor, a little bit more tropical flavors. So it's gonna be interesting, but also we have something that a couple days ago was illegal and apparently is not that easy to find, and the only brewers has it, uh, Brewery's has it, and I got my chance to get um, a little bit to try from Moon Underwater. Thanks, Clay. Uh, gave me a little bit so I can try and do the experiment myself. So, uh, also, he already did the experiments, and that beer is going to be ready, uh, I believe, in a couple of weeks. Maybe by the time this video is out, is that, that beer should be ready in Moon Underwater. So, you should go and try it to see what's going on with that beer, because uh, there's something very interesting going on in here. So another thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do um, hop mashing as well. So it's gonna help us to to get all those uh, thiols and all that kind of stuff, getting to increase those flavors. Apparently will give us more, let's see, like it's gonna increase the flavors eight times more. Yes, that's right. That's what they said, eight times more. And it doesn't mean bitterness. It means flavor and aroma. So I'm very interested in this, in this yeast and this, uh, this product called Phantom that we're gonna use. Um, this uh, product uh, that I said it only has it, like breweries has it, the clay gave it to me, is actually made of um, grape skins from uh, New Zealand. And yeah, it was gonna be interesting. So another thing I wanted to let you guys know is like, I've been busy a lot and I didn't have time to wait everything. So this time I literally got to the store, buy all the recipe. I mean, I got the recipe here. I'm gonna read to you guys. It's my own recipe, but I just got it that they scaled it for me. I mean, they waited for me. Like everything is in a bag ready to meal. So I just I like to meal my own my own grain. So that's why I just buy it on meal. But uh, yeah, um, it's not gonna be clips like what we wait and all the stuff. It's gonna be a shorter video. But um, I apologize for that. I'm trying to do a video that you guys enjoy it. And um, I don't know. I, something I had to do this time. So, but I promise the next one is gonna be the whole package again. Well. What are we gonna use for this beer? We're gonna need 12 kilos, 320 grams of uh, pale to row, 700 grams of uh, white wheat malt, 750 grams crystal 40, and 330 grams of caterpillars. That's all we're gonna need. Like I said, I got everything in one bag. All I'm gonna do, throw it into the mill, mill it, and get everything ready for tomorrow and brew it at Clandestino. All right, guys, well, let's get everything ready. Hey guys, we're here in Glandestino. Okay, let's start brewing. So what we're gonna do, just get the mash tun ready, etc, etc, etc. Okay, let's start. Well, we're gonna start with 11 gallons of water. Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, weigh three grams uh, calcium sulfate and we're gonna add it to our water. We got our um, three grams, so let's add it to it.
All right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna heat up our water to 70, 72 Celsius so we can dough our grain there and start over mashing. All right, let's get it. Hey guys, what we're gonna do now, while we got everything set up here, uh, we're gonna uh, get our uh, sponge water ready, which is gonna be nine gallons and a half. We're gonna heat it up at about 80 degrees and let it with the lid on. So when we use it, it should be around 75. And if it needs to be heat up a little bit more, we can just basically move on and a little bit instead of start heating up from the beginning, okay? Uh, that's to speed up this press, the process a little bit and get, let's see a little bit more efficient system. But what, let's do it. All right, have you seen, we got nine and a half gallons. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna heat it up to 80 degrees and we're gonna leave it there, uh, leave it there with a lid on it so we can basically uh, get it ready for whenever we need it. All right, let's do it. Well, as you've seen, we got temperature 71, 72 degrees. What we're gonna do now, we're just gonna dump the grain in. All right, let's do it. Well guys, uh, what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna do something that's called, well, apparently or according to this yeast, an article that I was reading, uh, I'm gonna leave the article on the, on the description so you guys can uh, go and check it out. They recommend to do a mash hopping. Yes, but I'm gonna add some hop during the mash and that's gonna be 42 grams, which is an ounce and a half of a uh, cascade. Apparently cascade works very well in that process uh, so what, what we're gonna do is just gonna wait 42 grams and add it to it, all right? Let's do it. All right, guys, what we're gonna do now, add 42 gram cascade to the mash. You see, um, I done test and the negative, so now we have all the starch converted to uh, sugars. So now what we're gonna do now, we're going to um, heat up our water or mash to 75 degrees. So that would be the mash out. And then we're gonna do the, you know, all the kind of stuff that we normally do. All right, let's get it. All right, guys, you've seen, we transfer. Now we're gonna start boiling, so let's do it. All right, guys, what we're gonna do here, basically, after we transfer, uh, now we're gonna start boiling. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add, uh, I'm trying to get 50 IBUs in this beer, this 15 gallons, so my calculation with that Chinook, 12.7% alpha acid is 119 grams so Wes, let's wait it so we can add it into uh, to the boil before they start boiling so that we don't have that you know those messy stuff all right let's let's wait it well guys we start boiling well it hasn't started boiling yet so you know I add the hop before so 
avoiding those uh, kind of effervescent kind of thing. Uh, things can get really messy. So we're gonna add it right now. It's 119 grams of um, uh, Chinook. Chinook is, uh, this Chinook is at 12.7% uh, alpha acid and we're aiming for 50 IBUs, all right? Let's do it. We're gonna wait 60 grams of cascade and we're gonna add it when it's 20 minutes left on boiling, all right? Let's get it ready. All right, guys, um, it's 20 minutes left and boiling, so we're gonna add the 60 grams of cascade that we got ready from the last couple of clips. It's great, let's add it on it. Okay guys, also we're gonna get ready another 60 grams of Cascade and this one we're gonna add it uh, as a hop stand. As you guys know, I always do the hop stand and we're gonna add it when we're doing basically a whirlpool when we are about uh, 80, 80 degrees Celsius, all right? Let's uh, wait it and get it ready and also we're gonna use something else, but I will let you know. All right, what we got here is called Phantasm. Um, I got it from Moon Underwater. Thanks, Clay. Uh, apparently, I'll tell you what it is. It's technically, um, it's made of a skin from a uh, grape from New Zealand. Excuse me, but I don't really know. I barely speak English. I don't know how to say this. I believe it's like French, like Savant Blanc or whatever. Uh, that's the type of wine that they use. So technically, what it is for. So this one, basically will help the yeast had a better bond with the trials and basically what we're going to obtain is basically it's a precursor of hop we let's call it so what we're going to do is basically or what it's going to do is um, it's going to increase the hop apparently eight on one so i'm in, i'm very excited i want to know what's going on with this but uh Apparently it was illegal, it's not easy to find it, but okay. Uh, it's, not more, it's no longer illegal anymore, but like, now we got it in our hands. Uh, apparently we can even buy it, so you gotta get it from a brewery or something. So, okay, we're doing the experiment. Let's see what happens, all right? Let's keep brewing. All right, guys, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna uh, put the, the coil in, so it start kind of sterilizing. It's 15 minutes left in boiling, so let's, let's put it in. Guys, with a whirlpool, fantasm. Let's add it. 240 grams. We're now 80 degrees. We're gonna add 60 gram cascade as a hop stand. Okay, let's add it. We're at the end of the brewing day. Uh, we got 15 and a half gallons. We, or we were aiming for 60, sorry, for six, sorry, for 15 gallons. And we end up having 15 and a half gallons. So 
I was expecting to have what I was aiming to get uh, 1.060 and I got 1.058. So that half, that half a gallon extra that I have liquid, that is the difference. That couldn't been 1.060 uh, that I was looking for. So I know that it's right there. So it's not gonna be a lot of different from one to another one. So anyways, so we're done. So we're gonna let it uh, ferment. We're gonna ferment 22 Celsius. Um, and I've been told that you gotta basically condition the beer in a hot temperature as well. Uh, don't know why, I'm gonna follow the instruction just because they already experimented with it. So I'm just kind of trying to do it for first time. So that'll be stupid if I don't listen to someone that already uses it, right? All right, well, uh, thanks for watching. And yeah, we're gonna wait for the fermenting and then we wrap up the story. All right, guys, see you later. Well, it's been five days since we transferred from uh, primary to secondary. So we're gonna take those carbons and put the beer into the kegs. So we're gonna carbonate it and yeah, let's get everything ready. Well guys, what do you think? Really nice and cloudy as we were expecting. Um, this yeast is, I will say it's perfect for the uh, Napa or uh, New England IPA, whatever you want to call it, or uh, Hazy IPA, apparently BJCP now I want to call it. Anyways, we're not going to get into details, but uh, let's, let's, let's try it. In aroma, it's really nice. Uh, passion fruit is what I detect and a little bit of um, uh, grapefruit. <sighs> wow. You can taste the guava, you can taste the passion fruit. Also you can taste the um, grapefruit from uh, Cascade. Overall I think it's a really good beer. It's a phantasm necessary to get this result? I don't know. I am actually a little bit, um, I got my I got my doubts. So I did the Saxon recipe in a couple of weeks, maybe three, four weeks, I, I will um, upload another video and I'm gonna show the Saxon recipe, the Saxon technique, but without the Phantasm. We're gonna compare what's the difference between one and another one. Also, I want to remind you guys that um, the podcast is back. This Friday, we're gonna do another podcast and we're gonna try this Phantasm versus or against, or we're gonna compare it. We're not gonna put it like in the competition or anything, but uh, Moon Underwater, thank you, Clay, that you gave me the Phantasm to make this beer. So he, obviously, if he gave me the Phantasm, that means he had a Phantasm. So he made a beer, it's called a uh, Tall Man with Phantasm. And Moon Underwater, Victoria BC, anyone that is in Victoria BC, I would highly recommend to go to Moon Underwater and try that beer. It's actually tasty, it's very tasty. So I'm gonna pick up the bottle and uh, Ian and I, we're gonna basically do the podcast basically about that. We're gonna drink both of them, we're gonna compare it, we're gonna be talking about that. Um, I hope to see you guys there uh, in the live streaming. If not, 
you know it's always getting recorded and it's there so you guys can watch it anytime anyways um subscribe to the channel activate the notification bell and give me a like all the little things that Facebook like and leave the comment. Seriously, you guys leave in really nice comments. Uh, thanks to um, Vine Yards, uh, Wine Yards or whatever. I really don't remember the name exactly, but they leave like really nice detailed comments. So I appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone. Well, I guess that's it. So we'll see you in the next one.